Learn to fly. Let's do it. I'm just going to jump straight in on this one. As I mentioned before, this series isn't exactly for people who want to learn songs note by note, but just need the cliff notes to get playing along. And all the little bits and bobs technically that you need to know if you want to make the sound quite authentic. Now jumping straight in on beat one, which might be hard to catch if you're not counting in with a band, if you're just trying to play along at home, is a flam. If you don't know what a flam is, it's very simple and it's a very important rudiment, especially when it comes to rock music. All it is, is you're going to lift up one stick and then the other stick, one all the way up, one halfway up and drop them at the same time. You end up with this kind of delayed sound, but we count it as one note. Basically just gives your hit a bit more oomph. I'd practice these both ways round, so halfway up being the left hand at first. And then the other way, so the right hand is the one that's halfway up. Try both. It's always good to learn rudiments, both right hand led and left hand led. Just bodes well later down the line. It'll make things a lot easier when you're trying to learn more technical stuff. So we've done the flam and then there's a ride cymbal groove. If you haven't played many grooves yet, if you're a new drummer, then here's a great exercise to make this a lot easier to play. What you're gonna do is hands are gonna play that normal eighth note pattern. And you're going to play a bar of the bass drum being on the on beat, first of all, so all your numbers. Get that nice and comfortable, get everything coming down together, and then we're going to change up the bass drum so you're going to be on the off beat or all the ands. This might be the tricky one. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Get it nice and comfy, then you're going to play one bar of on beat, one bar of off beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Notice that there's two bass drums at the end. That's going to bode well for when you try and play this groove as well. So when you're practicing anything like this exercise or this specific groove, I highly recommend that you keep counting out loud because what you're developing is what we call phonetics. It will serve you very well as you become more advanced. Next, we've got a fill that repeats in a very similar form throughout the whole song. I won't be going in, again, note for note for most of these fills because most of them use a very similar technique and a similar rudiment, which I'm about to show you. It's our friend, single strokes, you'll see them a lot. It's just right, left, right, left, right, left times many but it's really useful to get these down and have them flowing nicely because it just sounds better than trying to force them out. What do I mean by force them out? Most people, if they see fast notes come in, they'll just tense up and just All of it comes from either the elbow, lots of strain and lots of tension. We don't want that. We want this to be as relaxed as possible. And there is a way of doing that. If you stay relaxed and use a proper technique. You can get that kind of speed, and here is how I would approach it. You want to take the work away from your wrist. A lot of people will initially just use their wrist because the fine motor skills haven't really developed in their hand. So the first thing I recommend you do is flip the stick over and hit the bottom of your arm with the stick using your fingers to push it against your arm. Get used to that in both hands. Bit awkward to keep in shot. Then you're gonna bring your hands to the snare drum and just taking one hand at a time, just let the stick bounce. We're not engaging anything at this point, we're just keeping a light grip between the forefinger and the thumb. Keep that going in both hands. Once that feels comfortable, once you can get a sustained amount of drops in that. You don't want this, gripping too hard. Gripping too loose? Want neither of those. You kind of want to find a happy medium. And what you're going to do is gradually use your fingers to almost bounce the stick like a basketball. It takes a while to get, but I promise it's very worth it. Wait. <laughs> Funnily enough, this is one of those things that gets easier if it's a little bit faster. If you're trying to do this really slowly, it probably won't come out very well. And you probably will just engage your wrist a bit more, which is okay, by the way. But the aim of the game is to engage your fingers because that is where your speed is going to come from later down the line. So right now we're just doing strings of notes on either hand, but now we want to put them together. So one after the other. Oh, 
Obviously, you don't have to go that fast straight away. Just find a speed that you can maintain and keep all the notes nice and even. Your left hand, if you're right-handed, is not going to want to cooperate. I am telling you now, but be patient with yourself and it will improve. I promise. So, back to the fill. Fortunately, this song isn't too fast, but this technique will still serve you very well. We're going to go... Right, left, right, left, right, right, left. Three E and a four and a. No forcing it with from the elbows or the wrists. We're just letting it bounce. Because as you get faster, this motion will get smaller. And this technique and making sure you've relaxed can be applied throughout the entire song. And that basically covers you for all the fills. Like I said, already like twice before, this is not a note for note tutorial. If you'd like one of those, there are loads on YouTube. But if you'd like the full score, that is available in the link below. Also, if you want to reference the bit of the song we're talking about in context, then feel free to check out the timestamp that's been mentioned above in the link below. The main thing I want to focus on with the song is the verse groove, because we have what we call a displaced backbeat. Usually, with most songs in drumming, we have a backbeat on two and four. So the snare drum falls on beats two and four. However, in this song, we have a one falling on beat two and a snare drum falling on the and of three. Just makes things sound a little bit funky, really. But it's a skill to acquire if you haven't acquired it yet. So let's go through it. So again, we've got an eighth note groove in the hi-hat, but the bass drums and the snare drums fall slightly differently. Up to speed, this can get pretty tricky, especially if you're a brand new drummer. So a little hack, just a little cheat, I don't recommend this for everybody, but if you need to do it, then feel free to play quarter notes on the hi-hat as well. If you want to, but the real thing, One more detail on that displaced snare drum, the one on the and of three, we're going to put an open hi-hat as well. Feel free to just bring that left foot down on the next eighth note. Play that as much as you like until it feels comfortable, but that's basically the crux of most of this song. However, every so often there is an extra snare drum added on the beat four. So it sounds like this. Or some kind of variation like that. That kind of thing. Just one quick note on the choruses. It's basically the same as the very beginning, the introduction. However, if you're kind of blagging your way through this, just make sure you get a crash cymbal. In a four bar phrase, there's a crash cymbal on the beat four of bar two and beat one of bar three. So. Make sure that's in there and it'll sound a little bit more convincing or at least like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. I got you, B. Later on in the song, you've got some busier fills going on. My suggestion for that, there is a really common rhythm that comes up a lot in these Foo Fighter songs and it's one and a two E and. Right, right, left, right, left, right. It comes up a lot and you can often string some 16th notes after it and it sounds pretty convincing. Another really common one is where you kind of accent certain notes with crashes. That kind of thing, you can see the notation up here. You don't have to keep 16th notes going all the way through that. You can just end on 8th notes if that's too fast for you. Structurally, like a lot of popular rock songs, things get a lot busier towards the end. More fills, just feel free to put more single strokes around the kit. Try and experiment with where you place your crashes, that really common rhythm. Will always do well and will usually fit in most contexts. Try placing what I just did on the snare around the kit as well. There's lots of different options you can use here. And the last thing I'd really look at and think about, you always want to do this with songs, is think about the introduction and the ending. They're kind of the most important bits in my opinion. But anyway, the outro, we've got this really simple rhythm. 
However, counting it might be difficult. So if you're brand new to drums, I suggest you do this little hack. I actually use it all the time. Don't tell anybody. Quite simply, three crashes, but you're going to place two eighth notes in between each. And then one at the end after the last one. So the way you can count it is literally right, left, left, right, left, left, right. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Full volume. Make this nice and quiet if possible. And eventually, hopefully, you can take this left hand out. It's just good to give you a guide for the timing. That's literally a hack I use all of the time. So you're welcome for that one. So there we go. Learn to fly. Great tune. Have fun playing it. And I hope you have a great day. If you want the transcription for this and if you want to go note by note, feel free. The link is down here. If you want to check out any sections that we were talking about in this lesson, Remember, there were timestamps for all the sections we were talking about. If you want to reference the track, again, the links are all down below. Other than that, I hope you have a great day. Big love. Before you go, if you want to see more videos like the one you just saw, where it's breaking down famous songs in a bite-sized, easy-to-consume way, then feel free to check out the other videos I've done. The playlist is here. That is all. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.